Hey guys, welcome back to some more uh, naval action. Can do a little bit or uh, we switch over to something else because I don't know what I want to do. Possibly be more star citizen. Might do a bit of Empire at War and record something. I might record something for X4 as well. Like I said, no idea. I was sitting around in a third rate. I hadn't taken it out, so why not? Catching all the fish. I do have a couple of missions to do. I have to kill bell pools. Um, kill rank threes in a certain area. Do that thing. Kill Ingermanlands. So I have one killed. Uh... Kill rank 5, okay. 15 bell pools. 15 rank 4s. United States is a 3, right? I think that's a 3. But uh, we can kill this guy pretty damn quick and get some decent stuff, I think. Don't think it matters too much. I think the wipe is coming up. But I could be very wrong on that. I probably am. We got, we got long guns, long guns, and carronades. I think it's 32 pounders, 12 pounders, and 42 pound carronades. This shouldn't take too long, hopefully. He's going to get his volley off first, so let's just turn a little bit. It's not going to take long at all. Oh man. I had a mission to kill 15 of these. Jesus.
Down she goes. Good looking ship. I do like the look of it. Oh my god. Does it sink fast? Oh, it won't convert them? Okay. Twenty-four pound of bustiers. Take him. Oh, there's a the label. Oh, crap. All right, we need to catch that. Unless, well, there's not one there. actually used it. Is it a good ship? I have no idea. I do have a mission to kill a bunch of rank 5s as well, so if I see a, a large group, then um, we'll take them on.
Got the Navy guns in the front and rear. I don't think he needs to worry about his rudder. <laughs> Down she goes. Trader, an Essex with one small ship. That's that snow. Let's see if we can spot any decent targets up here. Get the Essex real quick. We'll just, yeah, we'll just head up this way a little bit. Wait, is the Bell Pearl rank 5? Yes, it is. Maybe we should start hitting that Essex and uh, other thing. I think the Prince has to be rank 6, right? Stop back there if we need to. Or it's sailing back to Nuvitas, which will take five or ten minutes. Let's 
Seeing as there any spawns behind us. Seems to be anything up here. What's going on? Melon player. Ah. Well, like Labana's up there. You're hoping for, um... Better targets than a break. I might need to go back towards Nivitas to get the better targets for us. Because I do need to kill the ships in East Cuba. Kind of sucks. So interesting that they're expecting the wipe in in a week or two. sevens and stuff. Apart from Navy service medals and investments, everything else gets wiped. Money, ships, ex stuff. XP remains? Oh. Didn't realize that. There's another prince. The guy we followed up here. We will meet a few things coming the other way. Should have just hit that Essex.
Here we go. Is that shrink? Break. Well, we'll take on the shrink. Do something. Cutter as well, okay. And we have enough crew to man our positions anyway. I'm running the French instructions for cannoneers, so it reduces the crew requirement for cannons. So that was handy. Turning into the wind with the manual sails kind of pushing us the other way. can do that, are you? Bar, wow. Well. Not the greatest amount of damage from us, but still. It's a raking shot.
Let it low. Let it low. And a little low again. Got one leak. Oh, right, the wind just turned with us. Nice. Where did half of them go? Hey, Jarek, how you doing? You doing well, dude? Doing fine? Good here. You just sat down with some food. Is that like 11 p.m. or something for you? Judging or anything, just asking. Oh, he's going to try and rotate back. Oh, you woke, oh, you only woke up at 7 p.m. Okay. Living the life, so. I have good news, we should be able to continue our Battletech campaign. It is only that mission that was bugged. Now I just need to be in the mood to get my ass handed to me. Sully. No, I don't. I don't work weekends at all. Which is good. I was saying earlier that I did mess up. That um. Car the road where he has I thought it was tomorrow morning, but it was actually yesterday morning. Um, I booked it in December, and I got like yesterday was the date I got, <laughs> so that'll tell you the backlog here. So I have to book another one. Ooh, it's been one of those weeks. Uh, national car test or basically a roadworthiness test all cars need to be uh 
in a decent condition to be on the road in Ireland. Basically, it's another way, uh, yeah, like the MRT in England, yeah. Except uh, you usually come out of it with an eye like that you didn't have going in. Come on. From that side. Talking about blasting the crap out of ships, we might be blasting the crap out of ships in a galaxy far, far away in a little bit. Wow, those carronades are all over the place. Even more than they should be. The communicatability, yeah, it does, yeah. Well, this is my personal car. I do have the, the work car. That's a different story. I like my cars, and I like to take care of mine, so I want to keep it on the road. So it's much more comfortable than the work car. I stuck in the wind. There we go. This is a standard third rate that I had sitting in the dock. I'm going to stream for a couple of hours, um, but I don't know what I'm going to stream. I might do some uh, Republic, or not Republic, Empire War remake, or I don't know, something else. Maybe just some Star Citizen. Uh, he's in bits now. And he's done. The cars are on Ricky 2005, worn for the last 12 years on its last leg, and I basically jump staring every few days. <laughs> yeah, always buy used. I'll never buy a new car. What's the point? I'll buy a car that's a week old, that'll be half the price. silly computer in the computer. It's a Volvo. Pretty sure it's taking care of you. It's mostly tax in the cars, etc. I know it's a bit Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, I think like the VRT here is what? 20%? Difference between tax, yeah, but yeah. If I sold my car to a dealer, 
But I would get a certain amount for it, and he'd turn around and sell it an hour later for two grand more. Uh, we'll take on the United States with the two small ships. I don't know if I want to take on that. But the eight medium ships. Oh, mine's mind's like at 2012. Washing out for a grand yet. <laughs> it's expensive wax. Alright, we'll take on this guy because I'm hmm, I don't know if I'd even be able to take on eight mediums in the victory. Depending on what they are. Was a bunch of label pearls that'd be fantastic. Yeah, two snows and the United States. I'm kind of interested to see what happens after the wipe. Well, not what happens after the wipe, but how the early game feels after the wipe. Granny's old car. Oh, yeah. Um, they changed the, they did the cannon rework and the hull rework in the middle of this wipe <laughs> oh, man. The only issue I've had with, with my cars has been um, the EGR valve, which is a redundant thing in an engine. And they always fail. Emission gas recirculation valve. There's absolutely nothing for the engine. I've had that go in three of my cars. States, I'm coming for you. You keep turning into that wind. And um, 
Edgar should be pretty much sunk as well because we sent off the other volley. Yeah, we wrecked uh, Joshua's rear armor. Or planking, excuse me. Now, Hen Hendricus also has no rear planking. Mr. Chance with that shot. script <laughs> total waste for the amount of damage that we did crap I'm on manual sales yeah. wondering why I was turning back around Full sail into the wind as we usually do, and now I'm gonna rotate the rear masts. Well, rear sails because you don't rotate the mast. And then with deep power. Yeah, it really. Why is. Oh. I was wondering. I was like, why is the range so bad on those cannons? Because it was set to 100 meters. Yeah, it basically um, it keeps putting your car into limbo mode. When it fails, it's like, uh, like, there's nothing wrong with the damn engine. was on random <laughs> yeah. Uh, the more sensors and stuff they can put in the engines, the more they can uh, charge you to replace them.
Right, now you've been dealt with. Should be able to get this guy with the ranging shots. Love the sound of carronades. Right, Edgar is down. Uh, we don't actually have to hit him again, it's a... Jesus, I keep aiming low. Yeah, three times, um, what was it, an Opal, a Fugio, and a Beamer. to uh, close the distance a little bit on this guy so I, I don't miss <laughs> yeah that's the other thing yeah Because, of course, the thing is, with all these warnings, they don't tell you what the warning actually means. They're, they're vague, like, you know. Even with your... Uh, even with interactive displays and everything, they won't tell you exactly what the warning means. They'll narrow it down a little bit. But the advice is always, you know, take it to your dealer and get it serviced. Now, if it's under warranty, no issue. Hendricus has sank. Won't be missing this time. Warning. Somewhere in your car. Maybe. Take it to your dealer to find out if it's this car. Or have a look at one of our new models. I remember my first car. My first car was like an Opel Astra saloon. And I could nearly service it myself when I was 16. And I can barely change a light bulb on my current car. She got a light bulb change on it the other day to prepare for this test that I just missed. Like you can either take out the whole lighting unit or you can uh, rotate the front wheel and there's a panel in behind the wheel on the arch that you can get in if you know where to look and get the bulb. By the way, this is why you Fighting the United States for a mission is really annoying because they take a punishment. Also, I'm just going to do this for the crack. We're not in any danger of losing. An 
the Austrian Metro. Called it a dodge of my, my driving skills. <laughs> 17 and both. Oh man. I do remember the first time I was allowed to drive on my own to collect my sister from the bus, which was fine. Go down to the neighboring town and collect her. When I got back to the house, worked up, no problem. We have a we had no limestone wall, so it's all jagged rocks, and um, parked up, no problem, and it's. Walking back in the driveway, and I said, oh, do you know what? That's a bit far out on the road. I'm going to go back and move it in a little bit. And I uh, touched one of the pillars, the limestone pillars, in a black car. I was shitting it all evening until my dad came home. But uh, it wasn't too bad. It was like a, a little surface scratch. A buff right out. Yeah, he should be sinking. If he's not already sinking. That volley just got five of his cannons. Nah, it's all good. I haven't I haven't crashed a car. Or crashed into anyone since. If people would stop driving into my peckin' car, I'd be really happy, especially when I'm not in it and it's parked on the side of the road or in a car park. My current car eight years ago, maybe 277 XP isn't bad for that actually. For one fight, the drink Cerberus Lorena May. Nope, I need little pools. But they could if they wanted to, but I usually park near a camera. <laughs> Did they want snafu as well? I think everyone has them though, right? That's how you learn. My current car is um is a white three series, and it has a bunch of black mark. Well, it doesn't have a bunch of black marks because I filled them in. But um, yeah, it's been hit on all four corners, and I've I've not been in the car once, and I even called the guards one time because I noticed that the next morning. But I think it happened, this particular one, I was walking down to my car and I was like, is that a leaf on my front bumper? Like, no, that's a big black mark on it. And I was parked underneath a camera of um, a place down the road from where I live. So I, I was sick of it at this stage and I just said, right, I'm going to call the guards and say, look, I think someone's after it in my car. There's a mark on it there that I didn't see before. But then afterwards they said no no one no one went near it overnight i was just thinking to myself it's like right, i was at the doctor's the day before and i parked in um a supermarket car park this supermarket car park is like where all of the senior citizens would would go in and grab their stuff you know and i'm pretty sure like someone hit it in that car park just rubbed up against it probably didn't even realize or they didn't just drove off but like yeah but because i'd modified the hell out of my first car i kind of had an idea of fixing up little nicks like that yeah that, that was the main thing frustrating and then like there was one bad one that did about 1300 euro worth of damage to my car um, I'm pretty sure they drove into the back of it sideways, caught the exhaust. So they actually pulled the exhaust to the side and by like two inches and busted the, the rear bumper around the exhaust. That's the annoying one. And I like it takes value off the car then if I want to sell it, you know. 
And we're in the middle of a sewing season, so that's when we take care of the grocery shopping in town with his car, so he could sew some more. Okay, well, I managed to lock the keys in so that it come with the Harley and open up the next screen. Now, that's not too bad. Locking the key inside is not too bad. Now, if it was your only key, <laughs> that would be a different story. All right, we'll head back down towards Nuvitas, and if we don't see anything worthwhile, I'm going to switch over to something else. Oh, I have to kill an Ingram Island. I have to kill 13 more of them, actually. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was very lucky about, um, I suppose it's about 11 years ago now. I was uh, driving back into town with um, a strimmer, strimming weeds. So that was in the boot, sticking out into the back seat. And uh, I was in a line of traffic that was tipping along nicely uh, on a 100 km an hour road. We all had to stop because the lead car stopped. And uh, a guy came around the corner behind me. He was looking into the field, saw me at the last second. So he was braking from 100 and drove into the back of me, sitting still. And that strimmer went straight through the passenger seat because I had it leaning towards that side. So it's very, very lucky. That was my Peugeot 307. And I have to say, the car took it like a champ. Took it. Now I have back problems since then, but the rear floor buckled. You could see there's two chassis bars sticking out the back. But like, yeah, the car took it all. Yeah, man, it is scary. It's, and that's how quick it can happen. Of course, I found out about six months later that I, I was working with your man's sister at the time. It kicked in a lot of what-if scenarios for the young lad that hit me, because he was 17. And like he, he took full responsibility. I didn't go after him in court or anything. I probably should have, just to get more money. But um, that was my mistake. But uh, yeah, he was walking around the car and he was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And he was nearly in tears. And then he saw the passenger seat. And he basically fell to the ground and yeah i kind of felt sorry for him but it was his fault in the end Yeah, plenty of what ifs. Like, um, my girlfriend at the time was going to come out with me, and I was like, no, no. We were doing up the garden in town where I actually live. And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to come out with you, sure. And I was like, there's, there's no one at home. I'm literally. I'm heading out, so I'm going to pick up this streamer and I'm going to come straight back in. The only reason I was in the car was that thing. And uh, so she could have been sitting in that seat. Or I could have turned it the other way. Because it didn't have the wire top on it. It had the steel blade top on it to get through the heavy stuff. Which was kind of nuts.
Don't think he's going to make it. Yeah, man, if, if um, you know, that's the way of the world, really. You can do nothing wrong and you can just be in the wrong place at the wrong time. A terrible video um, of a car chase in the United States and this guy was running from the police he'd lost control ran a well crashed through a red light I guess hit another car and the two cars uh, hit the side of a building there was a pedestrian walking there who got hit uh he wasn't, I don't think he died on the spot there, but then the corner of the building actually fell down on top of him. And the pedestrian was the only one that passed away, like, so this is nuts. So uh, I'd have road rage every now and then, seeing how stupid some people can be. Big problem in Ireland, it's just probably a problem in other places as well, but people think, ah, I can do what I want. rotate anyway <laughs> even your optimistic number is getting closer oh. now what they say live life while you can I think still the scariest thing that happened to me was um, it's still a toss up between um, the kidney failure five years ago or catching meningitis when I was like 13. That's why at this point it's like I don't I don't I'm not afraid of dying. It's just the way it's gonna happen. Very much changed my perspective on things. Yeah, there was a there was an outbreak, um here um i got i was like violently ill for three days my mother thought i was just faking it and there was an ad on the tv about the, the spots on your arm and stuff so, like roll a tumbler over it and if they don't disappear you should go get checked so I did that and that kind of saved my life. Um, yeah, I remember because I, I missed all my summer exams. That's why my mother didn't believe me. I ended up in quarantine for like a week. I'm glad the uh, kidney thing didn't catch up with me until my 30s because I had a good immune system. 
Ah, there's my brother and my pump. Cheek. So if you do get um, like damaged systems up here, hit five and four. You can see then it has like a two and a half minute cooldown. It's not too bad. Yeah, man, I was um, violently ill with that. And I remember uh, there was no one allowed in to see me, obviously, because I was in full quarantine. Except the priest, for some reason. You know, the priest that goes back to the parish. Uh, because Ireland. The priest and my parents were the only ones allowed in. Because it was uh, a matter of, like, the next few days. So, uh, well, the priest, my parents, and the parents of... Uh, a baby who also caught it and passed away it was in the room next to me. I have to bring the mood down on a Sunday night, but you know. Life stories. Anyone started having these stomach pains whilst we were playing tennis? He always thought it was a whinger, so he got some stick from us. Turned out it was a rare cancer and gave him a very percent chance of survival, so I say there's a bit of guilt. Yeah. He had it twice in 15 years. Yeah, fuck cancer. But. 10 year old cousin who passed away from cancer. Hello, Winger. Ah, yeah. Now, if you give out to him, he'll always turn back to that, right? That's what happened to me with the, uh, with the kidney. I was at work and I was leaving a bit late and I was going on a two weeks holidays. And uh, I had a really bad pain in my stomach. And I'd had um, a stomach ulcer before, because in my 20s, uh, I was uh, living the life, I'd say. So that's what I put it down to. But then it wasn't uh, dissipating with all the usual tricks and stuff that I did. And an hour later, I was in the A&E, crumpled up, couldn't take a phone out of my pocket or stand up straight. I was I was lucky to be in Ailey an hour later, because um, I, I live with people here, and um, like I was saying at first I thought it was my stomach, so I I spent about forty minutes arsing around thinking it was my stomach and trying to sort it out myself, and uh, then when I realised it wasn't, I went downstairs. There was no one there. I heard somebody moving downstairs and it was my housemate and her father was just coming over to collect her we're about to go off and she was like she'd never seen me like this um so her father got there like two or three minutes later anyway uh, i tried walking up to the car i was like oh yeah look just take me over to the care doc so that's like the out of hours doctor your gp and he was looking at me and says, I just watched you walk up to the car. You don't need the care doc. We need to go to the A&E. So, belted it across town over to the A&E. Oh, that's way too short. Right, I need to get in closer. 
And uh, yeah, we got there. There was someone at the desk in front of us. And they were being slow as hell. And uh, so my housemate went up anyway, and your man was there. Oh, yeah, I'll be with you there in a second. And then I came up to the counter and kind of just plumped down on it because I was having trouble standing. <laughs> And uh, he asked, like, do you, do you want a wheelchair? And I was like, no, no, I'm grand, I'm grand. She says, let me rephrase this. You're a big lad and you're about to fall down. Will you go get him a wheelchair from over there? And I'd say three minutes later, my hands were like, like in rigor. And, uh, that was fun. Got the pain under control about six hours later. Did a bunch of scans. They thought it was my appendix at first. Uh, a specialist came in the next morning. And said, before we take out your appendix, I want to have a look at something because I've seen this before. And, uh... Oh, oh yeah, it was uh, basically sepsis. Um, like severe sepsis. Basically, uh, calcium had built up in one of the tubes leading out of my kidney, uh, which cut that. And then basically, well, your kidney filters all the shit out of your body, and all that shit was going into my bloodstream. Yeah, your man came in, we did all the tests and stuff, and then um, it took about four months but then I got the surgery and that removed and she, it, it, it sounds crap yeah it, it, it is crap but that's that's life it was uh, basically I was born with two little holes in my kidney so it wasn't degenerative or anything it just happens to catch up with you at, in your 30s anyone listening that might be having stomach cramps and stuff make sure you get that checked out but yeah I was referred up to um, a specialist up in Dublin and uh, booked in for surgery there and got all that done at the recovery and all that I remember it was funny because uh, my blood pressure was up in stroke territory because of it. Like 190 over 140 and stuff like that, you know, crazy, crazy numbers. Every time a nurse took my uh, blood pressure, was like, Do you want it? are you okay? Like, you should be, you having headaches and stuff like this? I was like, no, I'm grand. But, uh, yeah, it all got started. Oh wow, Jesus Sully, that's, that's rough. Fire! Yeah, there's a, I know there's a name, well obviously there's a name for it, I don't know the name. I'm glad you're doing grand though, Jarek, you know. I got to see the scans of my kidney and it's like, looking at it, it's like they're two perfect circles. Because they've just grown out with me over the years. That's how I was wondering, it's like, how did I make it through my 20s? I was going out drinking five nights a week, working in bars and eating crap. Oh, gross shot. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, mine was the opposite. The kidney grew out around it, and it was like an eggshell. I had like 18% of a kidney that was trying to do the job that I was putting it through, <laughs> and that wasn't working. And the anger can take a beating.
Yeah, I, I, if I'm keeping the carnades on there, I need to fire them separately. Oh god. Oh, okay, they got through. Exactly, Sully, yeah. That's why I would say, like, uh, I have a very different view on... ...on things now as well, you know? And that's why I actually started the streaming, because I wanted to do it for years, but... I don't know, just didn't. God. Yeah, those like, carnades on the top deck. Yeah, that's the moral of the story. Shit happens, you'll get through it. And, um, again, like, Watching streams help me take my mind off things, so if this stream can help people take their mind off things, even though we're discussing it now, um, that's a help. And, like, people have reached out that watch the YouTube and have come into the stream, and, yeah, that's always really nice to hear. Exactly, Eric, and I'm very glad it does. I'm glad to be able to put you to sleep. <laughs> They can be, yeah. Uh... Can be stressful, too. Like, uh... Maintaining it and trying to make it grow that it's viable. Stressful. I'm terrible for looking over my analytics. Well, at least my YouTube analytics. Which is why, like, sometimes I'll, I'll cut a series short because it's just it's not doing well. same time though I'm streaming in my spare time I don't want to be shoehorned into the one thing that's like I could do x4 videos exclusively and probably do a little bit better for the channel I, I can't do that my head can't take that Him with the carnades, and uh, he's going down anyway, so. There was some very aggressive battle tactics that weren't on stream as well. Yeah, that was March. Poor old Sam. 
I hope he was happy though. ADHD, that's <laughs> fine as yeah. Ooh. I need to kill the pools. I do think I do. I, I think I'm slightly ADHD, but not like to a diag diagnosis degree, I think. Or at least I blame that. Um, are we going to be able to catch him? Yeah. Yeah, that, that that would be a fight. I don't think I can win that fight. I'd have to bring in a second or third ship along with the victory. Eight mediums. That could be like eight Cerberus or SX or anything like that. We're going to attack this way because we don't want to sail directly into the wind like him. <laughs> Workers and resources? Yeah, that should be updating in a few days. Actually, I could go do the public beta now. Um, garbage and stuff is in. And I don't know. I don't know if vehicle wear and tear has come in yet. Fishing has stopped because the hold is full. That's fine. Oh, it won't let me split them out here? Okay. We're not after loot here anyway, but we might just drop some of the fish for anything of interest. Make sure that we're fully crewed. I did a bit of transport fever last week as well, yeah. I do like transport fever. Oh, I've been all over the place with videos lately. Is that three? No. And damn it. I need belt pools for the mission, not renames. Well, let's just break the three of them. Yeah, and I I really enjoy um, the city builders, and like they're they're the most in depth ones. I was messing around on transport fever, trying to figure out um, a traffic problem. I reinstalled city skylines as well recently, actually. But yeah, I'm not buying all that DLC. I love the design of the enemy. I wonder if it's viable early. Like it's clearly not viable against a ship like this. But it's it's a rank five, it shouldn't be. Uh, City Skylines would be a game I'd play like this. Um, just like to randomly chill out. That was terrible. Yeah, I think, um... That's why like, I record all of the Star Citizen I stream, but I don't publish most of it to YouTube because I, 
I don't do huge edits because, well, you know, it work. Um, if I was only doing YouTube and like releasing a video every week, yeah, no problem. But um, I don't think it's some something people watch the whole time unless they're into Star Citizen. It's not like. It's not like with X4, you know, where you can kind of follow along. Oh, let's do this. Like today in Star Citizen, you know, Mr. Creed was there, he uh, revived me after getting knocked down. And then we got to go return the favor. It's the emergent gameplay like that that kind of makes it more interesting, I guess. Whereas even this, like this is just battles, you know, sailing around in battles, but it's chill and the battles are fun. No, I think it, it is very repetitive, especially um, the way I've been playing it. <laughs> but at the same time, then, I'm not playing with a bunch of other people, so I can get that way, you know? I would say it's a lot more repetitive than this. Because even in this, the battles are always going to be... Oh, crap. They're going to be slightly different. Well, that's what I was just saying. Um, it's Each battle is different because... It's not going to be the same four enemies standing in the same place barely reacting it's you know actually the setting helps but like I can walk into a mission in Star Citizen and say okay well there's gonna be this amount of enemies in this room and I can pretty much shoot them because the servers are crap and I'm using a silenced rifle as well I guess but I'm gonna stick with the servers being crap and then I can move on, because I know there's nothing else going to happen. Whereas, we're fighting a bunch of ships here. We have to take into account what they're trying to do to us. Because they are trying to actively get around us and shoot us. Although, we're pretty overmatching them. Because I brought out at their rate. But I think that's the difference. I think that's why stuff like X4 and stuff is easier to watch for people because it's repetitive as well but it's never going to be the exact same thing every time and with, which is why I wanted to do something different with the next uh, run which will be the rebel cell we've done imperial a bunch of times I, I like playing imperial but got to do something different Similar with them, actually, Total Conflict. It's like, you know, those battles are going to be repetitive. Hopefully they add more maps and stuff, but... 
not going to be the same thing every single time because of unit composition and so on. Yes. Yeah, it's very much a work in progress and a lot of mechanics still to be added. Like, eventually you'll actually be able to take... You know, prisoners. Like, actually capture people and take them prisoner and... Bounties and stuff and... You know, the salvaging mechanic is only in its infancy. All this stuff. Oh man. We had 17 shots there. Out of 33. But it's a matter of when is that going to happen. Who knows. They have persistent entity streaming in its initial state up and running, so that's a huge help to the Star Citizen. And then, of course, a lot of the tech that they're working with is stuff they're making up um, themselves. So they're kind of pioneering that. So eventually uh, repeating the process will be easier. But that doesn't excuse, you know, half a billion. Oh, he's dead. Okay. Oh yeah, Total Conflict is good fun. We might jump in and do like a quick uh, random battle here in a bit. Oh, we're on fire. I don't like being on fire. Twenty there, that's optimistic. <laughs> to be fair, that is optimistic. Oh, I didn't realize we got him so bad. through the sails. Uh, there's one there's one thing I really hate about Star Citizen and that's the hype that's put into every single patch. Like oh this is gonna make it a whole new game. So, no, no it's not. It's gonna slip the same bugs as all the previous matches. I've actually I've stopped following channels because I couldn't couldn't listen to the crap anymore. And it's the same with Starfield. People are like comparing it to, oh, it's going to be like Star Citizen or No Man's Sky. It's like, nah, it's going to be Fallout 4 Plus. It's the Bethesda game. Looks pretty much like they do all their trailers. And Todd Howard even said it's going to be, you know, it's a Bethesda game. It's going to have all of the stuff that you'd expect to see in a Bethesda game. It's like, but people are going to hype it up to the high heavens, and I, I hope it's good. And it does look decent in the trailers. But as I said in, um, I was talking to someone in another stream, it's like, 
It's going to be another Bethesda game. I don't know why you're expecting it to be something that it's not. They've been making the same game. Um, um, I was going to say, yeah, they've been basically making the same game since Skirm. So I think it's on the same engine and everything. Uh, French Gunners. Take that. And the pennant. Are you trying in particular non European server upgrade one time and the lift controls? Yeah. <laughs> Like City Skylines 2 looks like it's going to be really good. I'm wondering how much all the DLC is going to cost. May sound cynical, but it's fact. Oh, actually, did we get any progress in these then? Uh, no, not that one. Got two Ingers dead. Got seven rank fives killed. We need 21. I could get eight. Fighting that. Got three rank fours. Two bell pools. Oh, I need to get 15 frigates. Okay. Better is deciding not to get certain DLC now. My OC did rain. Yeah, I was terrible. Like, if, um, on, let me have a look at this here. Naval action will still keep going there. On top. You there. Like, if you look at my, even my favorites, I have 148 games of my favorites. The amount of games I've bought and don't play much of. 14 hours in Arma. 4 hours in Age of Wonders 3. I didn't like Planetfall. But Gothic, I thought I'd play... Do you know when you think you play more than that? Um, Gates of Hell, I want to go back into.
Like even um, Chaos Gate Demon Hunter, they're kind of enjoying it, but not getting fully into it. And it's doing terribly on YouTube as well. You know that algorithm. Over just got taken. I loaded up, I think, seven different games before starting the stream tonight to see what I wanted to play. It's the way my head is working. Alright, we got a bunch of bookshelves, Loki Rune, Think Kits Gunners, and French Gunners. That's actually a really good one. Well, I think it's a really good one. I usually put it in just for the cannon crew not being needed. So what's the cannon crew on this? It's like 570. So that's 57 crew that you don't need. Actually, I think I have that on here already. So it's already down. I haven't even been watching where I'm going. The um, Banner Lord has got a big update as well. I think it's like the biggest update since post launch. They've changed how workshops work and uh, they've added in a few more bits into the battles. I think you can order people to attack specific formations and stuff now, which is kind of huge. I'm just holding off. I want to jump into the old world mod. Do any of you watch uh, Reformist? Um, probably what I'm going to watch after this is he started up um, Anno Domini 1100. The medieval mod for it. If it's anything like the one for Warband, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I like I like I like Banner Art. It's um obviously it's not the best thing to stream because it's yeah it's going to be very repetitive again. But with those new additions, I'm kind of curious what the modders are going to do with it. Because you can now, like, uh, you get a warehouse and you can directly supply your workshops and stuff. You can also directly take goods from their production. Things like that, which would be kind of cool. I think we're turning in there, right? Yeah. Spent to start new games. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. That's why I was like, we have been all over the place the last couple of months, I suppose, with what I've been playing. I find it hard to have to sit down and do the same, like in, in the couple of hours I stream during the week, 
I really don't want to be locked into having to do something for a couple of weeks, which is why my playthroughs always take so long. It's a good excuse to testing games. Yeah, an expensive excuse. <laughs> That's why um, most of the things I'm, most of the new things I'm doing, I'm trying, I'm trying to get keys for stuff. And to be fair, I've been off, I've been, well, I've been given a few and I've been accepted for a few. Like Forever Skies, I got accepted for that. I don't think I actually applied for it, but. Uh, the Phantom Brigade there has actually offered me a key, but I already own the game. So <laughs> I might even do some of that, actually. I might do some more Empire of the Undergrowth as well. That was kind of cool. <laughs> I was actually, I was going to see if I could mail them and ask them could I do a giveaway. I was, I said to him, I was going to say to him, look, I'll do a video on it because I want to play it anyway. I do want to do a run of it. Um, and is it all right to give away that key? I haven't claimed it yet. I'm, I'm very um, lax today. I should be a lot more proactive about uh, like advertising the stream and contacting devs and stuff. I I don't do that. I just when I get home from work, I'm either gonna go to sleep and get up and stream in the morning, or you know, just do something else. So. We have a few ships here in port. We have our third rate. Been doing a grand job. The Inger. I like the Inger Manland. I know that's in the way a bit, but. The Bologna. I really like the Bologna. I like. It's not a huge. Are they the same ship? Basically. Yeah, basically the same ship. At least the same model. A few slight differences. <laughs> the weapon. Love the weapon. Although the weapon is what, a rank four? That's the difference there. It can hold 24 pounders. Whereas like the rank three can hold up to 32 pounders. I've moved to the 32 pounders off of this onto the um third rate. Well they are basically the same ship actually now that I'm looking at. Except the third rate has much thicker Third rate is actually a better ship, really. Bologna's faster. Same turn rate. The bigger cargo hold. It was its own state. Oh, is uh, Ingerman on like an island? Of course, we have the big girl. It's a region? Okay. 
Agamemnon. I really like the Agamemnon. I think it's a great ship. That's why I have, what, two? I have two left. All the ones that we put up for sale the last day actually sold, so. Get the little frigate. Don't know why I have that. Wasa. Good ship, good looking ship. Right, we have this San Pablo. Very much like that ship too. Oh man, we need to upgrade his guns. 